So, hey, I want to welcome all those who are uh, new here and checking us out. Um, I, I want you guys to know, like, we are, we are back from camp. How many people went to camp? Yee. It was fun. Uh, what is the one thing that uh, when Joe was speaking at camp, what is the one thing that just kept coming up when he brought people forward to say, hey, like, tell us about yourself? What did you, what did you notice? We're family. We're family. So if you're new, if you're checking us out, or maybe this is your first, second, uh, third, maybe even fourth time here, uh, we want you to know that we're family here and that uh, family matters. And not the TV show from the 90s, but uh, family matters because we want you guys to feel home. We want you to feel welcome and that you're part of this. So um, my name is Tyler. Uh, they call me Papa. Uh, no, they call me that in Mexico. They're like, Papa. Uh, the Mexico team. You didn't do that? Uh, it was Ashley. You guys, Brooklyn, Jonah was there. They called me Papa because I was, what, what? <laughs> Maybe. So I'm, I'm everyone's daddy. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. I won't say that. Uh, oh. <laughs> All right. Moving on past that. Let's ignore that. All right. <laughs> I, could, I could take this so much further if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. So welcome to family. Welcome to life groups. Not life groups. Life groups is later. I'm all over the place. I'm flustered. All right. Um, hey, we're starting a new series called Bold. And uh, our new series, Bold, uh, this is our, our new set. We have bold colors, and we're bold like a lion. And so um, we're going to be talking about what it's like to live a bold life for Christ. This is a four-week series. Today we're going to be talking about being bold in prayer. Uh, next week, Kira is going to be teaching. She's going to be teaching on uh, being bold in faith and being bold in faith. And then um, that's also Super Bowl Sunday, so we're going to have a lot of fun. Bring your Super Bowl jerseys, or not Super Bowl jerseys, just NFL jerseys, wear them. I'm going to wear, be wearing my jersey. And, uh, but Kira is going to be uh, teaching about being bold in faith. And uh, I think you guys are going to be really excited about that one because Kira actually lives it out. Um, I meet with her on a weekly basis, and she, she lives out her faith on a consistent basis. And I've told her many times before, like, Kira, if, if every student turns out to be like you, I'd be the, the happiest youth pastor because she really lives it out. So... Um, <laughs> So I want you guys, I want you guys to be here, cheer her on, root her on, because she's going to talk about um, her life being bold in Christ. She's going to talk about just what God's laid on her heart within it. She's creating her own message and all that stuff. And so, uh, so next next week is being bold in faith. The week after, um, we're actually going to, um, I'm going to be teaching, and I'm going to be teaching on something that's really heavy on my heart, and that's being bold in leadership. And I believe that so many people in this room are leaders, and I think many of you guys don't believe that you are leaders. And so what I want to uh, encourage you in this message uh, in Bolton Leadership is to step out and take leadership in situations and in areas that you uh, might not be bold in. You might be nervous to and just say, oh, no, I'm not a leader. But I really believe that God is calling you guys to be leaders. And I believe most of you in this room are being called to be leaders in some form or another. And so we're going to talk about being bold in leadership. And then uh, the last week, what we're going to do is we're going to be teaching on being bold in evangelism. Evangelism, that's spreading the gospel, spreading the, good, the, the word, spreading the good news. And we're going to be talking about being bold in uh, evangelism, which is uh, the, that Wednesday we're going to have a one night. And we're going to be talking about, hey, you should invite your friends to one night and be evangelistic. Be reaching out to people who don't know Jesus yet. And, and start to spread the gospel. So that's kind of what we're, uh, what, where we're going to. And my whole desire within this is that we live unashamed of the gospel. We believe in Jesus and we're unashamed of being bold in our faith. We say, you know what, I believe in Jesus Christ and I'm going to live out for him in every area of my life. Okay, so I'm going to pray right now just to start us off. And then we'll get into uh, today talking about prayer, being bold in prayer. 
So let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for this morning. Uh, I just pray that it's a time of blessing. I pray that you just do some amazing things just as, as, I'm, as I'm teaching. God, may you speak through me, God. Uh, God, I'm kind of a mess right now. Sinus infection, I'm all over the place. So I just pray that I don't have a coughing fit. I pray that I can just uh, have a clear mind to be able to just speak and be able to share your word, Jesus. And may you speak through the passage that we're talking through. May it just touch hearts and may it challenge us to live a deeper and a stronger relationship with you on a daily basis, God. We love you and we pray this in your name. Amen. So this series, uh, we're talking about boldness. So everyone say bold. Bold. Awesome. So what is boldness? Boldness is a behavior that's born out of belief. Boldness is a behavior that's born out of belief. And so today I want to talk about how we can uh, specifically, specifically I want to talk about being bold in prayer. And let me start with this. What you pray for reflects what you believe about God. Let me say that again, okay? What you pray for reflects what you believe about God. If you don't pray at all, then it reflects that you don't believe in God. If you pray selfish prayers, God, it's, it's all about me, give me stuff, then you believe that God exists for you. If you pray small prayers, things that, ah, oh, just, God, be with this, be with this. It shows that you have a lack of faith in a big God. If you rarely pray, then you don't really believe that God will answer your prayers. What you pray for reflects what you believe about God. And I think we're a get-or-done type culture. If we want anything done, then we have to, oh, I'm going to grind this out and do it myself. It's hard for us to give up full control over to God, uh, the God of this universe even. We don't want to give him control. We just, God, we'll take care of it. And so we won't give up control until we realize that we don't have control of a situation. And then we start thinking, okay, maybe I should give this over to God. And when people get in a tough situation, they start to do everything that they can do and they try to help the person who gets sick, but when they realize that it's out of their control, then they say, well, all we can do left is pray. And many of us, prayer is a last resort, which means that we believe that life is up to us, and if we cannot handle it, then I guess that we'll finally give it over to God. But I don't think that's what God's plan for prayer is. Prayer reflects what we believe about God. Think about everything you've prayed for this last week. This last week, you guys have been praying for probably different things. Especially after camp, you've been praying maybe a little bit more. I've talked to with a couple of students like, Tyler, I'm praying every day. Think about everything that you've prayed for in this last week. Many of you would probably even say, I can't, I can't really remember what I prayed for this last week. And that says a lot about what you believe about God, that prayers aren't very important. Now, if you do remember what your prayers, prayers were this last week, if God miraculously answered yes to every one of your prayers, how would the world be different? Chances are the only things that would be different are the things that are close to you. Centered in your world. Get good grades on my finals. For your parents to stop fighting, your parents to get a raise, a grandparent to be healed, friendships to be mended. Maybe those are your prayers. But those are all centered around you. If you pray the way that most people pray, and if God answered everything, the only things that would change would be the things that are close to your circle. I've been learning that praying beyond your circle is actually bold prayers. The prayer warriors that I know, they pray beyond their sphere of influence. They pray that many will come to know Jesus. They pray that people who, uh, that they don't know, people who write in prayer requests on the Crossroads thing, the prayer warriors at Crossroads end up praying for people that they don't even know. God, may you be with them. It's outside of their sphere of influence, but they believe in the power of prayer, and so they are bold in their prayers. 
They pray for lives to be changed at crossroads and around the world. They pray for spiritual awakening, probably in locally, here locally, but also beyond that God would awaken a group of people to come to know Jesus. People at Crossroads who are the prayer warriors, they're praying for Burundi. They're praying for the whole country because that's the heart of our church is the country of Burundi and, and making an impact there. Pastor Mike and Jerry Cooper are there right now and they're teaching about, they're teaching pastors. And so their people, prayer warriors here are praying for new leaders to come up, for new pastors to come up, local here but also globally if you want to make a difference in this life, you're going to need to learn to pray some bold prayers. Not prayers about you, where God, you're just there for me, but prayers that are outside of your influence. I think bold prayers are the ones where only God can change the situation. Bold prayers are where only God can change it. Not you, but God. I think of Caitlin Norris, uh, she's a freshman girl leader. And I think about her family. And Caitlin, when she came in 2016, fall of 2016, she came for the, for, the, for the first time. And she just started praying that God would bring her family. And then she started getting other people involved with praying for her family to come to church. I had never met her family, but I had been praying for her family to start coming to church. What happens? Kyle shows up on a, on a service in March. And then the next week, uh, her mom shows up. Her mom was actually just serving this last week, or this, this last service in Cruisers, or Explorers. And then, and then like a couple weeks later, the dad shows up. And ultimately to the point where her whole family has been baptized, her whole family is involved in what's going on at Crossroads. That's a big, bold prayer. Because she's like, she was in a situation where she didn't believe that God would actually bring the family there because she knew how stubborn her family was. But God has transformed their family. Today we're going to look at a story in Acts 4 with Peter and John. And they've been preaching the gospel and, and sharing about what Jesus has done. And what happens is that there's other people that are listening to them and they don't like what they're preaching. And so what they do is they seized Peter and John. They grabbed them and they threw them in jail until the next day. They got rid of them, like, okay, they're preaching the gospel too much. We don't like what they're preaching. Let's get rid of them. So they throw them in jail, and then they put them on the stand the next day. And the next day when they're on trial, there were many threats for their lives. And they're just explaining what they're preaching. They're explaining what they believe. <coughs> so then ultimately, they were released, which was good. And in Acts 4, what is going on? Did pro presenter just quit? Right when I'm about to go into my scripture verse. Okay. All right. I'm going to just read it and you guys can follow along. So Acts 4. Say, on their release, so they were released from, from being captive. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. In prayer to God. To God. Something incredibly powerful happens about praying together. There have been times that I've been in these five hour long just prayer sessions with people, and I, I'm never the one who's like the first to go to it because I'm not that excited about like, oh, sweet, we're going into like a five, seven, ten hour prayer session or 24 hour prayer session. <clears throat> I've never been a huge fan of these prayer meetings. Not like other people that I know. I know other people just love those prayer times. And uh, so they're always the, one, the first ones to show up. I'm not the one who's like weeping and praying because I'm ex experiencing the presence of God. Like I know people who are just like, oh, God, you're so good. And there's like snot running down their face, slinging everywhere. And <clears throat> But I have been part of some really powerful prayer times with other people. When we pray together. But I think sometimes we get confused on what it means to be praying together. It turns into this system when we pray together after life groups. Like, hey, who's going to pray? All right, cool, let's pray. 
Then things get uncomfortable because there's this thing in this room that I even saw when I started praying that people like to like hold hands when they pray together. And I always roll my eyes at that because it's always confusing to me because I, I never know like, all right, are, am I supposed to go up or down? Am I supposed to like cut my hands or like open the fingers so they can like interlink? Like what am I supposed to do and intermingle? Like then you have like the dead fish guy who just like holds his hand out like this and you're like, oh, like I hate holding this. Then you have the person who's just like, overly tight hand grabber and every time there's a, a powerful point they squeeze tighter and like oh that was good and it's like you know it's good when they like squeeze the hand tighter and the more they pray the tighter they get and as believers we do weird things as well because and new people are like what like what's going on because when we hold hands and everyone says amen everyone knows give a little squeeze release Right? Give a little squeeze, release. And so it says, amen, squeeze, release. And if you hold on a little longer, it's like, oh, it's a little awkward. And with students, I hate this too because I, I always get worried and that these students are trying to find a sly way to, when we pray, hey, let's pray, they like try to reach in and like, yes, right next to their crush, like, let's hold hands. And I'm like, uh, is that how our hearts should be when we're talking to the Lord God Almighty? Like, Hey, God, thank you so much that I'm, like, holding hands with my crush. It's so good. And, like, God, let me talk to you while I, I'm also holding my crush's hand. And, and I think many of us just say, like, that's what we do. We hold hands. We pray. That's our system. It's turned into a thing that we just always do. But as I really look into this, like, I really believe that prayer is, is not a system. There's no system to prayer. Prayer should be a systemless thing. There's no specific system of how we pray. I don't think you do friendships exactly the same. You have the exact same conversation with your friends when you walk up to them and you start talking. No, I think your friend, it changes. Your interaction together changes depending on the mood you're in. That's okay to talk to God that way. It's the same with talking to God. When you pray, change it up. God, I'm just not feeling it today. I'm really grumpy. I'm angry. I need you to come in and change my heart and attitude. Or you might be like, God, I'm so happy. You're so good. That's okay. Change it up. Be real with God. He can handle it. Be real and bold with him. And here's the deal. Even though hand-holding and holding hands during prayer, that's, that may not be my natural nature. I don't like it as much it can still be incredibly powerful. And even though I, I hate the hand-holding, I also know that there have been times where I've been praying my boldest prayers when I'm hand-in-hand hand with one of my close friends who I love. I remember holding hands with my friend JJ, and we prayed one time for like over an hour, just holding hands, standing around in a circle with three of us. And we were being prayed over, and we were praying, and God was giving us the boldest prayers that we do ministry together. This is Joe's son, JJ. And so we're praying and, and like our hands are sweaty and it's gross, but we forget about that because we're, we know that we're praying together for this. We're proclaiming Jesus. It's important for us to pray together. Matthew 18, it's not even on the slide, but it says, for where two or three gather in my name, where two or three gather to pray together, there I am with them. Where two or three gather to talk with Jesus, his presence is there. We have to come together and pray. And not these prayers that are like, oh God, can you help this person? Oh God, can you help this person? Amen. Okay, cool, let's go, have fun. But we pray because we want to be close. We want to bring the presence of Jesus with two or three people and gather together and just actually pray. Not so that we can get things done, but for God to show up. And not prayers like, oh God, keep us safe. Give us a good day. But bold prayers. And I believe that the believers in Acts 4, they came together and they prayed. And so that was the slide that didn't go up there, but, it, but it's there. So Acts 4, verse 24, says, Sovereign Lord. Sovereign means that, hey God, you're the man. You're the one over everything. You are in charge. Sovereign Lord, they said. You made the heaven and earth and the sea. What is going on back there? Okay, Sovereign Lord. 
They said, you made the heavens, you made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit. And this is as they continue praying. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in the city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided before it should happen. So what I love, keep this up there. What I love about this is they say, hey, sovereign Lord, they have a God consciousness. They're focusing on God during this prayer time. And I can guarantee you they aren't reminding God of his faithfulness. They're not saying, hey, God, do you rem- I need to remind you, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea. And God, just, I'm going to remind you that you made everything in them. God knows all that stuff. God knows that he made the heaven and earth, the sea, everything in them. But what they're doing is they're posturing themselves in worship. Prayer is worship. It's not, it's not just saying, hey, God, give me this, 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 and this. A bold prayer is getting into a situation, getting in, down on your knees or whatever, however posture you are, but posturing your heart into a, a posture of worship. A posture of putting God first. Not saying, hey, God, you need to do this, this, and this for me, but God, you did all this. I worship you because you did all this. It's also reminding themselves of how great God is. And they're also reminding themselves, they're not saying, hey God, you know how you sent Jesus, Jesus down on this earth and they, they persecuted him and they killed him and, and then he rose from the dead. They're not saying that, but they're doing it to, hey God, I remember that you decided that this was gonna happen so Jesus could die, raised from the dead, And so we could have life. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. And I'm not saying this because I'm trying to remind you of what happened. I'm saying this to give my heart a posture of worship. And so what ended up happening in the next two verses is Peter and John, they prayed two prayers. The first one is they prayed for boldness. They prayed for boldness. These guys are already living out for Jesus. They're already getting arrested because they're living it out and living out their faith. And Acts 4.29 says, Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. They are already bold and they're asking for more boldness. What were the threats that they had? Probably they were being threatened to get beaten, thrown in, into prison, uh, even killing, being killed. They prayed for more boldness even through, even though the boldness that they had was already getting them arrested. And they said, God, we're asking for more boldness. I think we easily lack boldness that these disciples are asking for. We easily think that it's okay not to be bold. We can just live our everyday life and let me just live every day and ask God to be part of it. Maybe a little sprinkle of Jesus over here and a sprinkle of Jesus over here. And ooh, I just got an app from the Sprinkle of Jesus app. And like, I got a verse. And it's nice. Yay! I don't think that's what these disciples had in mind with Jesus. Like, oh, here's a little sprinkle of Jesus here for my day. What they're doing is, God, we want to live full out, all on, bold. So we're praying for boldness. They want the whole thing. Let me ask you this. Have you ever prayed for boldness yourself? Hey, God, make me bold. And I don't think most people ever have. Why? Maybe you never thought of it. Maybe you never thought of asking to pray for boldness. Maybe you think it's scary to live bold. But bottom line is boldness is an others-centered prayer. Boldness is an others-centered prayer. Let's be honest. Most of our prayers are self-centered right? Most of our prayers are about us. God, give me, help me have a good presentation. God, give me an A. God, would you, would you heal grandma? God, can I, can I get my license? And oh, please, 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 Lord, will you just let this pimple go away? When you pray for boldness, what you're doing is you're not praying for God to do things in your life. You're saying, hey, God, I'm praying for boldness so I can do things for you. It's an others-centered. When you are used, it's not for yourself, it's for others. So when that happens, God starts to open doors. And it may not be comfortable doors. 
when you pray for boldness, it may not be comfortable. When I pray for boldness in my own life, it's the seasons where I'm supposed to go out of my way, where I'm supposed to serve other people. I'm supposed to meet with students and pray with them right away. I'm supposed to serve others. I'm supposed to have the hard conversations that I've been postponing because I'm supposed to lead in that way. I'm supposed to give money that I've been saving that I don't want to give away, but God's saying, hey, don't trust in money, trust in me, so give. When you pray for it, God will give you boldness and it won't be comfortable, but it will be life-changing. When you pray for boldness, it will be life-changing because when you're praying for boldness, you're not just praying for God to do big things, but you're praying for your heart to be formed into the likeness of God so that you can be that change agent in the world. When you pray for boldness, then God starts to stir things in your heart towards him. So the first thing they did is they prayed for boldness. That was verse 29. Verse 30, next verse, they prayed for miracles. They prayed for miracles. <clears throat> they said, stretch out your hand and heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. They're going to pray big prayers. They're going to heal people. They're going to raise people from the dead. They're going to cast out demons. Demons. These are all bold prayers. These are all things that happen after this prayer in the book of Acts. And let's be honest, most of the prayers we pray are just little prayers. Like, God, thank you for this day. And God's like, you're welcome, but you've said that for the past 10 years, every day, I already know. Or God, just be with us today. God's like, uh, read the Bible. I've said that I'd be with you to the very end of this age. You don't have to ask for me to do it. I'm already doing it. God, give us safe travels. Uh, if you wear your seatbelt, if you travel the speed limit and you keep your eyes on the road, chances are you'll be just fine. God is saying, hey, hey, ask something big of me. Because when I do it, everyone will look at it and know that I answered your prayer. Ask for miracles, ask for signs, ask for big things. Because when I show up and actually answer your prayers, everyone will know that I am real and alive. Our bold prayers should point people to the work of Christ. What you pray for reflects what you believe about God. If you have big, bold prayers, God's going to come through and he's going to show up in some crazy ways. When that happens, signs and miracles start to come true. And over the past years, I've been moving from asking God, hey God, can you please do this? Can you do this for me? Like, to moving to declaring in Jesus' name. When I pray, I don't say, hey God, can you do this? Can you heal this person who's sick? No, no, no. I pray and say, I declare in Jesus' name that this person will be healed. Why do I do that? Because when I pray, there's no wiggle room for my faith. I'm declaring, this is what I believe, Jesus. And there's no wiggle room. I'm very clear with what I am asking of you and what I'm declaring. I'm very clear in what I'm giving to God. And when that happens, signs and miracles have come true. I've seen it happen. What does a sign or miracle do? It points to the real thing. It points to God. So why don't people pray for miracles? I think a lot of it is we struggle and we, we don't believe. Others don't want to be disappointed. What if I declare this in Jesus' name and what if he doesn't answer it? I don't want to get disappointed. And maybe it thinks it make, we think that it's going to make God look bad if he doesn't come through. And a lot of times when we say, hey, God, if it's your will, would you do this? That's basically giving God an escape clause. Hey, God, if it's not your will, then that's, I don't need it. No, God's just like, declare in my name, pray boldly, trust in me. We should never hesitate. We need to declare in Jesus' name. And I have no fear in asking God for anything. 
I just prayed over a student this last service because I was talking about this in first service, and then he's like, hey, I have a friend who's just really sick, and he might have cancer, and he's only like 20. And I was like, you know what? Let's pray right now. Let's pray. And I just declared in, in Jesus' name. I was like, Jesus' name, God, we pray that you will heal this friend and change his life forever and that it points everyone to Christ. I have no fear of asking God for anything because I've seen God perform miracles in and around my life. Does that mean I get disappointed when God answers and it's a no and he doesn't actually answer what I've been asking for him? No. Because there's a story in the Bible where Joshua is praying for the sun to stand still and for the sun to come up and to stay there so they could stay in battle because when it was daytime, they were winning. And so Joshua says, God, I declare that the sun will stand still. And guess what? The sun stood still right over them. And do I give up on God when I ask for the sun to stand still and it sets? No. My faith in God is big enough to handle a no or a not yet from God. Because he is the sovereign God. He is the one over everything. He is the one who's in charge. So we need to come to God boldly and be willing to accept his answer, even if it's not the answer that we wanted. So many times we pray, 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 God do this, and it, it doesn't happen. Has nothing to do with, has nothing to do with, your, oh, I'm not faithful enough, or I sin too much, or anything like that. God's just like, no, I just gave an answer to that, and it was a no. Or, or maybe I gave you a different answer and it wasn't what you exactly expected, but something better for you. We need to come to God boldly and be willing to accept his answer, even if it's not the one that we wanted. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this in life groups this week. What if God answers no or not yet? I don't like that. It's fine. Prayer is not about God answering all your, he's not a genie. He's not going to give you all your wishes. Prayer is about posturing your heart towards God so that your heart can change towards him. So I encourage you to make sure that you are praying bold prayers in God. Ones that are not just about your sphere of influence, like, oh, God's going to help me and God's going God's to change the area around my life, but ones that are beyond you. Pray that God changes your heart to go deeper towards other people. Pray things that you don't think are possible. Because then that's when God can show up and say, no, it is possible with me. Because in those prayers, God reveals himself to be true and the God of this world. So let me pray. Father God, I just pray. I pray that this series that we're going through is just a series that changes us. To be bold. I pray that we're a youth group that, that lives out boldness. And that, God, I, I pray that this camp that we just came back from is a catalyst for us to be leaders amongst our school, amongst our friends, amongst our teams. God, I pray that in this room we have uh, future team captains, future uh, ASB leaders, people who are influencing the lives and people around this community, Jesus. Because we are people who are living bold for you. God, I pray that our prayers are not ones that are selfish, but they're prayers that really just posture our heart and our lives towards God. God, I pray that if anyone is lacking faith or if they need an answer yes to the way that they want it just so they could have a little bit more faith, God, I pray that you do that. I just pray that our hearts are postured in worship towards you and we know that you are the real one, that your love is great. You love us no matter what our background is. And God, I just pray that you change us from the inside out. So God, I pray for this week. Not, not that it's just a good week, but it's a week that we live it out for you. God, I pray that we get in uncomfortable situations so that we can point people towards Jesus. I pray that you open up those doors for us to be able to proclaim your name wherever we go. I just pray that you just do some amazing things in our lives this week. Not just a good week, but just amazing things that we see that only God can do. So we love you, Jesus. We thank you. We pray all this in your name. Amen.